Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the topic of the uh, uh, DC biasing of BJTs in which today we formally discuss the first configuration. Till now the previous two videos that we saw those were just to build up the road map towards the topic right. That was the introduction and that introduction part is very difficult for me. Starting of a new topic is always quite challenging. Now once I get on the track then it's easy to go on to move forward so today in the first video we see what we see the we see the fixed bias configuration this is called the fixed bias configuration of a bjt fixed bias configuration now what is this so this is the same common emitter configuration having the supply vcc single supply to both the terms so you have a vcc Wait, 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 wait. Just a little, little to this side. VCC. You have uh, the the the. Let me just split it into two parts. This is the resistance RC. Fine. The collector leg, and this is over here. Have a look. This is the emitter. This is grounded. And on this side, you have the, the base resistance, not the base resistance, the resistance that is in series with the base terminal. This is RB. This is an NPN transistor. So which means what that this is IE, the leaving current, IB is the entering current, IC is the entering current again. We have one supply that is VCC right so what is the thing the 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 the, the overall thing revolves around the the kvl the kvl and the kvl is applied to the input terminals to the output terminals right so if you apply to the input terminals you could say that what if vcc input terminal you could have what vcc minus ib times rb minus VBE and this is equal to 0. So this is one equation. From here you can write what? You can write that IB. IB is equal to VCC minus VBE by RB. Yes, yes. Similarly, you can apply the KVL to the output side. You can apply the KVL to the output side. The same VCC minus ICRC. You will have a voltage drop from the collector to emitter as well. VCE minus VCE and this is equal to 0. So from here you can write the relation for the collector current that is IC. And this would come out to be VCC minus VCE divided by RC. Isn't it like this? It should be. It should be. Or you could say that IC is beta times IB, right? You could also have written this as IC is equal to beta times IB which is equal to beta times IB. So most of the time you will be using this equation beta times IB. Fine. And most of the time the output voltage VCE is unknown. So VCE would be what? It would be VCC minus a IC RC. And that is it. That is it. Now if this VCE is greater than 0.2 volts, this is in the active region. If this is less than 0.2 volts, this is in the saturation region. Right? Right. And what do you have is, so this we have already seen in the previous video, the sensitivity factor. So that is beta plus 1. The sensitivity is beta plus 1. We've seen from the previous video. That was the same circuit that we took. So this is a high value, which means that this is not a stable BJT configuration. This is not stable, right? So how do we make it stable? We see that in the next video. 
we want ic to be constant or independent of temperature so for that what do you have s s should be ideally zero s should be ideally zero or practically it should be a very small value but this is a very high value which means this is quite an unstable system for a smaller change of the temperature you've got a higher change in the collector current so this is an undesired characteristics we'll see a much improved circuit in the next videos right yes okay now let me tell you one point one point is that i wrote over here ic is equal to vcc minus vc by rc so this will not be using this we will not be using we are considering the active mode of operation so for that we'll only be considering it to be beta times ib okay the in the active region in the active region i would just write it over here that you have a beta times ib this is for the active region okay in the active region the ic is not a function of rc it is not a function of rc this is what the book has written which means that by changing the value of rc neither the collector current nor the base current would change right ib is a function of the base resistance so by changing the base resistance ib would change and then it is related through beta to ic and directly they are saying that in the active mode of operation this this is not a function ic is not a function of rc but from the circuit for any other analysis you know you can write it that formula which i wrote over here but in this book in these examples we will be considering it as like this right so let's say we have a little uh, uh, examples let's say we have example on this we have a little example on this and what is the example so so over here it is example 4.1 for the fixed bias configuration shown example 4.1 what does it state determine ib and ic ib is unknown ic is unknown vce vb vc vce vb vc and vbc so these terms are all unknown what are the given is vcc is 12 volts vcc is 12 volts given rb is 240 kilo ohms rc is 2.2 kilo ohms and then what do you have that is it that is it so you know what it is you can just simply apply the kvls if you don't remember the formulas you can just do it directly these are very very simple things very very simple things so ib is what vcc is given vbe you are let's say given a silicon transistor right so consider it to be a my uh, to be a to be a point seven right so have a look ib would come from here ib would come from here vcc is given 12 minus 0.7 for silicon and divide by divided by rb is 240 kilo ohms so which means what that ib comes out to be let me just write it for 47 micro ampere something 47 micro amperes right yes ib is done ic is beta times ib the value of beta is given which is 50 the value of beta is given which is 50 so if beta is 50 this means what that ic is 50 times 47 into 10 to the negative 6 and this comes out to be what i see comes out to be 2.35 milliamperes 2.35 milliamperes and you would be given these sort of questions these are just simple questions then you have what vce so vce is again this thing you have each and every values vce would be what vcc 12 minus i c 2.3 milli into rc rc is 2.2 kilo vce you have got what is the value 6.83 volts 6.83 volts have a look it's greater than 0.2 volts it is in the active region which means it is acting as an amplifier then what do you have uh, v vb is unknown vb uh, so so we know that vbe would be what vbe would be vb 
minus VE. VE is what? VE is 0. Why? Because the emitter terminal is at this. So VB is equal to VBE and this is equal to 0 0.7 volts. Isn't it like this? Uh, it is right similarly we see we see is unknown so again you have vce is vc minus ve so again ve is zero so vc is equal to vce and you've already find that out is it is a 6.83 volts next is vbc so that would be vb minus vc you have uh, vb also you have vc also so do this this would come out to be some negative value negative uh, what is the value negative 6.13 volts negative 6.13 volt this negative side indicates what that this is reverse bust and of course the collector base junction is reverse bust so this was just a simple example transistor saturation transistor saturation a term is given so ic would be vcc by rc i wrote that formula over here and what was that? So that was VCC minus VCE divided by RC. So this formula you can use what? You are asked about the transistor saturation. So transistor saturation refers to the maximum transistor current. And we talk about in terms of the collector current. So the transistor saturation would be one transistor saturation. This would happen when? when the maximum collector current would flow and that would be IC when VCE is equal to zero. So at VCE is equal to zero, IC would be maximum and this, uh, this would be determined by VCC upon RC. Right, yes. Do we have any other example? So those are from the load line analysis. We'll see that in the next video. Right, we'll see that in the next video. If I have uh, something over here, if I have, let's say, let's say I have an example over here and IC is unknown, RC is unknown, IC, RC, RB, example, IC, RC, RB, VCE is unknown, VCE is unknown. The given is what? The given is VCC 14 volts. We see C 14 volts. We see 6 volts. I B 40 microamperes. Beta 80. Now these simple things I just get bored. And that is it. So the values of RC and RB are not given. Uh, yes, so they are, they are to be found out. Anyways, so let us just start with the solution. IC is unknown. IC is beta times IB. So beta is given uh, 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 and, and IB is given. So IC is what? It's beta times IB, which is 40 micro. This comes out to be what? What is the value? Just tell me from here is 3.2 million pairs. I'm just writing it directly from somewhere. Okay, I'm just copy pasting it. You need to calculate, you need to confirm the calculations. If I have any mistake, you are most welcome in the comment section. Right? Yes. So IC is done. Now for RC, have a look. So RC is over here. IC, VCC you have, VCE you don't have. So for VCE you have VC. Emitter is already grounded. So VCE is equal to VC. Why? Because the emitter is at zero. So, so you can find out RC from here. RC would come out to be what? VCC 14 minus VCE, which is 6 divided by IC 3.2 milli. Please tell me the value. RC is 2.5 kilo ohms. 2.5 kilo ohms. RC is done. RB, you have IB, VCC, VBE, RB could simply be found out. RB is what? It's VCC is 14 minus VBE is 0.7 divided by IB and that was given is 40 microamperes. Just let me write the value and the value is 332 kilo ohms, 332 something kilo ohms. I'm not interested. Do the calculations for yourself. And VCE is, so you've done this. VCE is equal to VC. 
anyways so this was another example if you want me to do one other as well so just let me do it let me do it I C V C C beta R E example I C V C C beta and R E are unknown V C C beta and R E are unknown and what are the known quantities the known quantities are C is 2.7 kilo ohms RC is 2.7 kilo ohms. IB is 20 micro amperes. IB is 20 micro amperes. And IE is 4 milli amperes. IE is, I will write over here, 4 milli amperes. And the last is VCE is 7.2 volts. Now, whenever you're given this sort of question in the paper, you're not given it like this, okay? I am drawing, you You are given like this. A circuit is given and the values are written on either side, right? So from that, I just write it in this particular fashion. Anyways, so I see. I see is beta times IB. Beta is unknown, so you cannot find out that directly. Yes, then VCC, so you have IB, VBB, RB, do you have RB? You don't have RB. So this one is a little tricky. This one is a little tricky. So what can we do is, uh, VCC, how can you find out VCC? From here, you, you have IB but you don't have RB. Hmm? Similarly, you can find out from here, but you don't have the collector to emitter voltage. You have the collector to emitter voltage, but you don't have IC. You have RC, but you don't have IC. So, if you have IB, what do you have? You also have IB, you also have IE. So, so you've got the collector current. IE is equal to IC plus IB. Isn't it like this? It is. So, which means IC is equal to IE minus IB. So, this implies what? That IC would come out to be IE minus IB so this is 4 and 20 this is in micro micro and this is in milli so do the uh, uh, convergence and you have what 3.98 milliampere 3.98 milliampere so have a look we all we always say that IE is approximately equal to IC and you can check from here that your IE is approximately equal to I see you can check from here 3.98 and 4 milliamperes. So you've got the value of I C. Now what do you can do? You've got I C. Now you can find out VCC, I believe. You can find it out from here. Why? Because you have uh, uh, you've got R C, right? R C, yes, you've got R C. So you can find out your VCC. VCC would be equal to VCE, which is given 7.2. And then you have a plus, IC is 3.98 milli and RC is 2.7 kilo. So you've got the value of VC whatever it is, 17.9 volts. So we're done with this, 17.9 volts. Beta is IC upon IB. Beta is IC upon IB. You have bought both. So beta is IC. 3.98 on IB, it's 40 micro. So, so do this, 3.98 milli, 40 micro. Beta comes out to be what? 199, 199. Beta is 199, it's done. And finally, RE, <coughs> sorry. RE is, where is RE? No, no, RE I have written this RE, no, this is RB. We don't have any RE in the fixed bias configuration. We don't have any RE. So this is RB basically. So RB you can find it from here. RB would be what? VCC is 17.9 minus 0 0.7 divided by 40 into 10 to the power negative 6. RB comes out to be? Oh, 862 kilo ohms. Something may be wrong. This is a very big value. Anyways, you can do it for yourself. You can do the calculations yourself. The main thing is all written over here. KVL to the input loop, KVL to the output loop. 
and this is the sensitivity factor and that is it about the fixed bias configuration what did we conclude from here that this is not a stable configuration why because with a little change to the external conditions the collector current would rise rapidly which means the the, the 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 operating point would change it may go to the saturation mode it may go to the cutoff mode which we do not want we want it to be in the middle and that we'll see how can we attain that one thing else this is the dc biasing so this was this is basically you have turned on the device the thing is that you have a capacitor over here before you apply an ac signal and your ac input is applied over here right this is your capacitor c1 it's called the coupling capacitor what and similarly for the output you have over here for the output the ac output is taken at this point this is your capacitor C2, right? So you, you also have to pass your input and output through capacitors. But in the DC analysis, what do we do? The capacitors are short circuited. In DC analysis, we don't have the capacitive effect. Why? Because you know that XC is 1 over 2 pi FC. And as F is 0, so this means X is infinity. And this acts as an open circuit. So we just have open circuited this. And, we, and, and, and in the DC analysis, we have nothing to do with the capacitors right so that is about the fixed bias configuration what do you have you have a single supply connected to both of them the emitter is directly grounded anyways in the next video we also see some load line uh, 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 examples on this okay so uh, not in the next video load analysis i said we'll do it in the next video but uh, when i checked in the book so it's only a single example so why in the next video we'll do it over here we'll do it over here and that's example 4.3 so example 4.3 states what that the given the load line the load line is already given and the defined q point q point is also given so you need to do this basically in a proper graph paper take a proper graph paper and then only then you will enjoy it only then okay if this is your VCE, this is your IC, the load, uh, so these are given like this. So have a look over here, it cannot be drawn properly, right? So these are the currents for IB is equal to 0 microamperes. 10 microamperes, 20 microamperes, 30 microamperes, 40 microamperes, 50 and 60 and whatever. And similarly the load line is given somewhere over here. So somewhere over here it's 10 in milliamperes and you have what the Q point would come over here somewhere it's 20 volts so the Q point they say are coming somewhere over here okay this is your Q point it has moved somewhere due to the temperature variations you could say because it is not on the proper intersection right yes so what is asked determine the required values of vcc rc and rb vcc rc and rb is unknown for the fixed bias configuration and q point is given so how did you found out you could say what that we see vce is equal to what vcc when ic is equal to zero and that would be what that would be 20 you have it over here right yes similarly you can say that ic would be equal to vcc by rc where where vce is equal to zero and this value also have is 10 you have this value as 10 so rc so rc you could find from here and this is vcc or vce 
आई सी इज इक्वल टू वी सी सी अपॉन आर सी यस सो आर सी वुड कम आउट टू बी आर सी दीज आर द टू कंडीशन राइट यू मेट द टू कंडीशन दीज आर फॉर द इंटरसेप्ट सो फ्रॉम हेयर यू कुड से वट दैट द आर सी वुड बी वट आर सी इट वुड बी वी सी सी अपॉन आई सी You have the value of VCC is is 20. You have the the value value of of is 10. RC comes out to be 2 milli or what? Kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms. RC is done. Similarly, RB. So for the IB formula, you can say RB is what? VCC minus VBE. So VCC is 20 minus VBE is 0.7. Divide by IB and IB is what? IB is 2.5 microamperes, 25 microamperes. So at this Q point level, at this Q point level, just let me take this call, please. Okay. So uh, IB over here, if you if you draw the proper coordinates. If you check it proper, no coordinates, no coordinates. Sorry, 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 no coordinates. This is in the middle of 20 and 30, so you have take you you take it as a 25. So the RB value comes out to be 772 kilo ohms, 772 kilo ohms, and that is it. That is it. So which means what? Which means that if you are given a load line, you are given the output characteristics. So you've got a Q point. So which means you can get VCEQ, you can get ICEQ. You can get from here is ICQ, and similarly you can get from here is VCEQ if if this is drawn with a proper scale on a proper graph paper, right? Similarly, then you can have the Y intercepts, the X intercepts, and from there you can have two values, and based on that you can find RC, and the basic formulas are over here. The most important thing, the basic thing is KVL. KVL to both input and output loops. If this you have applied correctly, you can do the rest your own self. That is it for the fixed bias configuration. See you in the next video with the next biasing configuration. Till then, take care. Goodbye.